Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at Apple and do a quick valuation here and see uh, what kind of price target we get for them. Um, so first, I have their income statement, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows. I'll show you quickly uh, where this comes from. If you're not familiar with where to pull company information, um, go ahead and open up an internet browser. Head on over to sec.gov. In the top right, you'll see more search options. Go ahead and click there, and then you'll enter the tick ticker symbol. Um, so for Apple, I believe it's AAPL, is that right? Yep. And then we can go ahead, um, you can look through all their filings. So 10Ks are annual filings and 10Qs are quarterly. Um, I prefer to use the most recent K to go off of so you don't have to pull multiple Qs um, to, and then pro forma a quarter for a full year. But So we'll open this up and you can scroll down a little bit and it'll have uh, selected financial data. So here's sales, um, net income, and actually if we go up to the top, there's probably a better section that has the full financial statements. Um, that looks like it was just kind of snapshots, um, financial statements, and some supplementary data. There you go. Um, so income statement, uh, balance sheet, and then the cash flow will be down here as well. Um, is this the cash flow? No. Uh, and then there's cash flow. So that's quickly where everything comes from. Um, the DCF template we're using is a pretty standard DCF template. Um, to be honest, it's, you're just going to get to unlevered free cash flow, and then we'll go ahead and discount that back. And then from there, we'll calculate a terminal value. So um, I'll link this up real quick. We can just come here, do total sales, paste that over. Um, Cogs, same thing, we'll link that up. Uh, OPEX, we'll link that up as well. DNA, um, if they have that, that should be on the cash flow statement. Yep, DNA 17 through 20, got that. And that gives us a, so we're calculating EBIT as just basically um, operating income, just taking gross profit less SGNA. So if we were to look at their income statement, um, it would just be operating income. Uh, it's a really good proxy for EBIT. The tax affected aspect here, this is saying like what's their cash taxes that they're going to pay. Usually you just throw in their tax rate there. Um, and in theory, it's looking at kind of before the impacts of their, their balance sheet structure. So it's ignoring how much leverage they have and how much if they may have a tax shield or anything of that nature for having debt on the balance sheet. Um, so you can see historically we're using 34% and then once the new um, tax act or jobs act or care or whatever the heck the act was called and it lowered the corporate rate to 21% um, switching over to that. So then you can adjust it EBIT, add back DNA, um, so less CapEx. So this is actually linked up down here. Um, once again, this should be on the statement of cash flows. There should be a um, payments for acquisition of property. There we go. So we'll link that in. And let me see, how's this? That's just doing a sum. So we actually want this to be a positive number as well, just based off how the our sheet is set up. And then change in working capital. So down here, we'll go ahead and layer in working capital. Let me look at the balance sheet. Yeah, we only have 18, 19, 20. So we'll start with 18 for current assets. Um, sometimes you'll see people just take all current assets and then subtract that from total liabilities. Um, I mean, I don't like to include cash or marketable securities. Usually I do like AR, uh, inventory, vendor, trade receivables, and we'll do other. Um, the reason why I exclude cash is like, I really want to look at how much cash is being deployed kind of from an operational standpoint. Um, so is it AR, right? If accounts receivable is, is increasing, that's a use of cash because you're not collecting on your payments. Um, and if AP is increasing, um, then that's a source of cash because you're not paying your clients. So I kind of look at it from that standpoint. Um, and then we'll come down here to current liabilities. Same thing we'll do. We'll do accounts payable. We'll do other. I don't look at deferred revenue um, or debt. So we'll just do those two. We'll see how that kind of works out for their working capital. So 
yeah, they're actually producing kind of a, you know, current liabilities higher than current assets. So um, that's kind of, and yeah, I mean, kind of expected here, pretty, pretty flat. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and just kind of forecast everything out. And we'll we'll build out the the rest of the DCF here. We'll value it, and then we'll kind of come up with a price target of what we think, um, you know, a fair value for Apple is. So you can see their sales are kind of all over the place, 16% to minus two to five and a half. Um, if we come look at the income statement, you can see services is growing at a pretty healthy clip. Um, and actually, I, I'm going to do a quick little Kager here just to see how services has been growing in comparison so what is this one to the fourth and I think I subtract one from all that so services has been growing at 13.2% uh, whereas products has been growing at 3% and overall a CAGR of about 5 um, and I guess if we assume right if we assume that this holds it 3% and then this holds at 13 that Kager as this services becomes a bigger portion of the total um, Overall their net sales may start to grow. So For now, I'm gonna hold it to five and a half Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna increase it a half percent a year For two years and then we're gonna actually will regress back towards Where they've been um, I'm giving them credit here saying their services are going to grow pretty pretty fast and they're going to be able to hold the the product offering stuff um, and then we'll just kind of like average out towards their historical CAGR. Um, COGS, I mean, that sits in line at about 62%. So I'm just going to actually put that at 62% for now. Uh, SGNA, 11, 13, 14. You know, maybe we just actually hold that at 14 and then we'll add, you know, 10, 10 bips, scale it to about 15 over the course of that. Tax rate, we're just going to leave it 21 for now. Um, CapEx, we can see 55543. Um, I'll probably actually just leave this at closer to negative 5. I like to be conservative on my first estimate. Um, so we'll just leave that conservative and we'll see how this kind of all plays out. Um, so then CapEx, this is actually going to be a formula. We're just going to multiply that by as a percent revenue. So we'll do that for now. And actually we need to probably drop a negative in there so it gives us a positive number. Depreciation as a percent of CapEx. Um, I mean, it was an 80% range and then recently it spiked. Arguably, they're going to have to have growth capex, so depreciation should always be less than capex because they'll be adding more capex every year. So I'm going to put this back closer to the historical trend of the um, of 81. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and then here, let me just copy the formula over. And we can see. The, I mean, this has been trending. You know, averaged at 22 and a half, averaged at 32. So let's just leave this at, I'm going to leave this at 20, or I guess 22. That's fine, just at the average, and then the average here is what, 32. So we'll leave that for now. Put that across, and then all this should be linked up. So now we just have to link in our model here. So we'll multiply that across our growth assumptions. Copy that formula across. Um, this is just a percent of revenue. You can see, look, I mean, yeah, we're saying in 10 years, you know, they'll almost double their gross profit. Revenue will be about double. Um, that seems conservative, relatively fair, I think. And revenue times SGNA. DNA, we want to link it up to the negative down here. Go ahead and do that. What's going on here? Was that one all funky? Go 
because that's not linked to revenue. That's why. Let me uh, fix that. There we go. So you'll see the change here is actually pretty small most years. So now I'll come over here and we'll calculate a, a price range or price target per se for um, Apple. So cost of capital, I usually use 10%. Another way to think of this is how much of a return you need for your investment. Um, I mean, you could throw a 7% if that's all you require, but S&P historically returns about 10%. And then when you take out inflation, you get closer to the 7%. So um, I'll go ahead and drop 10 there. You'll see by doing that, we get um, NPV, the cash flows of about 400 billion. Growth rate, terminal growth rate is just how long they'll grow after 2030. Usually you set it close to inflation, so about 3%. Um, and then that'll calculate a terminal value there and we'll NPV it, um, so bring it back 10 years and that'll give you enterprise value. So right now this is saying about a 900 billion enterprise value. So now we need to subtract out net debt. So we'll come to the balance sheet and let's see how much debt they have. So net debt, if you're not familiar, um, that's going to be just current debt, less cash. And then cash will be both actual cash and then marketable securities. Um, I would assume that this, do they have more debt than cash? I'm kind of surprised if they do, but maybe they do. Yeah, I guess they have what, 107. I guess we could, oh yeah, they have these non-current marketable securities that we should probably drop in there as well. Um, that might be like longer term T-bills because yeah, they have, 200 billion of cash, which seems more in line. So we need to also subtract out the this aspect. And then this should actually be a subtraction. So based off this, we get, you know, uh, almost a, a trillion dollar market cap. Um, and that's with some, you know, I would say holding most things constant and flat, being pretty conservative, we're giving them some top line growth. You know, I guess maybe we could, um, so let's say they can grow up to 8% and then they reverse back. You'll see this doesn't actually impact all that much, um, the equity value. And just for reference, if we pull up um, their current market cap, I believe they're closer to 2 trillion. If it wants to pull up for me. Yeah, 2.07 trillion. Um, so, you know, definitely a bit. Um, a bit off. Uh, I mean, I guess what you could really do, right, if you only required a 7% return, you're getting closer to that 2 trillion. I think the issue with that is after inflation over a 10 year period, that 7% is eroded pretty quickly, but one way to look at it. Um, so, I mean, yeah, we can come down here. This is a sensitivity table, just showing us the valuation. If you only require a 5% return, right? I mean, then yeah, they're undervalued, but if you require a 7% return, um, maybe they're fairly valued. Realistically, I think I would, you know, I would want something probably closer to a 10% return. Um, but, you know, in this current market, you might not be able to get something like that. Um, buying some of these larger tech companies, especially that seem to be at all time highs. Um, but yeah, I, I would think the, they're probably closer on a conservative basis, a trillion dollars. Um, and then if you're willing to take, you know, a lower return, maybe make some more aggressive, you know, maybe you do get to the two trillion. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a frothy valuation going on here. Um, or you just have to really lower your expectations of return, I guess. Um, right. You could always come in here and you could say, no, they're going to get back to this 10% growth. Right. So if we came in here, said, we're going to grow 5% a year, and then we're going to grow a percent a year off that. And then slowly 
reduced down. We're going to say 19 and 20 were blips. We're going to get closer to that, you know, 2018. Um, you start to get, you know, better, much better valuations, right? Like all of a sudden you're looking at nine, eight, nine percent return, um, pretty close to that 10% return. Things are actually looking a lot better. Um, and you might be able to make the argument and you could say, oh, we're going to, COGS is actually going to go down. Let's go quarter of a percent a year, right? We're going to, COGS is going to, we're going to get better at manufacturing. SGNA is actually not going to grow. It's going to, it's going to decrease. We're going to, we're going to become more efficient, less people doing more, no more stock options. Um, all of a sudden, yeah, I mean, you're, you're fairly valued. So it, I think it's really going to depend do you think Apple is going to be able to reaccelerate growth in the future and get back towards, you know, the big iPhone launches where everyone's upgrading, or are they at a point in the market where um, you're not looking to buy a new iPhone every year? You know, they're releasing new products, these new headphones, all the new AirPods, the AirPod Max Pro or whatever it's called, over the ear ones. They have the new home speaker that's smaller, so maybe they will continue to grow at 10 or 11 percent. But when you're already selling, um, what is this? Three hundred billion dollars of stuff a year. Um, it's going to be hard to sell three hundred and thirty billion dollars of stuff. So, there. Uh, you know, I think um, depending on the assumption you wanted to make here, you can easily get to their current valuation without too much of a stretch, um, which is something I can't say about a lot of companies I've looked at recently. Um, but at the same time, I feel much more comfortable at kind of a one to one point five trillion dollar valuation. Um, but you know, the market is. Uh, Markets at all-time highs. A lot of companies have been getting higher valuations, and Apple is actually probably one of the few companies where um, they've they've proved themselves over the years and have consistent revenue growth and consistent products that that are selling out. So, uh, hope you found this useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Um, happy to you know answer those or dive into any more discussion. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Appreciate it.